Well, welcome back to the Old Buck Ranch. Uh, today's project is uh, making another walking stick. Now, this is going to be a little different than the ones I've shot before in that it's an older blank that I used a couple of years ago for one that I shot a video of. And the difference is it's extremely dry and all the outer bark has already sloughed off. And I'll try to get a close up here in a second, but you'll see that it's just covered with worm holes and you know grub holes, that sort of thing. And I'm just kind of curious to see how it's going to turn out. You know, it may not turn out at all, but uh, just something to do today. And you know, another thing about this particular blank is it's got some cracks. And one of the things I'm going to probably try to do, if, it, if it's worth doing later, once I get the bark down, is you know, seal these up with something resin or wood glue or you know something to you know keep the cracks from getting worse, and then try to sand them out. But I just want to shoot a quick video and kind of show you the process and show you eventually maybe what turns out if it does. So uh, just want to shoot a video and here we go. Well, I'm not sure if this will focus this close, but you can see the wormholes and all that in the blank. And it may still be worms in here, I don't know, but it's amazing they can burrow through this hard wood. And it's got some cracks. This end is better to see on the ends and such. You know, it's not unusual for this uh, hedge wood to crack. I usually try to get to it quicker before it starts cracking. And once you get it down, you know, to the heart, it doesn't crack after you've you know, sanded it out too bad anyway. And that's why I use a little bit of beeswax uh, to seal it in and preserve it. All right, well, here we go. I had to do a little bit of a reset. I was having a really hard time getting through that, that second layer of the bark with my belt sander. It's just not powerful enough. So I came back out and took a draw knife and got most of the rest of it off. There's just a couple more knots. Um, usually I just chop through them with a hatchet and then the belt sander will it'll let me you know smooth them out so but you just can't draw them out. Them hard knots with a, a draw knife. Well, it's, it's looking pretty good. I think those uh, bug holes kind of gives it a little character. Well, I had to bring it in uh, yesterday. The weather set in. So I'm uh, out again today under the barn. It's not ideal setup, but sometimes you do what you got to do. So I've got the basic shape roughed out, and I'm just going to uh, turn the end into a knob. And I'm trying to work on getting some of the thickness um, sanded down also. So that's what I'm going to do today. And uh, looks like it's turned out pretty nice overall, so I'm pretty happy. Just don't have as much room today to work, but uh, we'll make the best of it.
Well, hopefully you can see this. I'm done, you know, roughing out the, the basic shape. I'm actually really pleased so far with the way it's turned out. This, is, this one's a little thicker than the ones I've made before, but I think that's okay. I like the heft. Um, hopefully you can see that real nice little knurled end it turned out nice. Hopefully it will focus on that. And uh, you know it's got a really neat character. It's twisted, but you know from the head to the toe, it lines up, so it, it feels good as a walking stick or as a cane, whatever it would be used for. So at this point, the next step is just to take my hand sander. next with a medium grip pad and then depending on how much of the wood grain stays you know dark I may try to burn it again before I hit it with the the fine pad so, so here we go well looks I'm pretty much done with all the sanding I'm really pleased with the way it turned out um, it's really, really smooth. You know, I left the uh, these bug holes in there, and it kind of adds character. I want to take a little air sprayer and spray out all the sawdust, but other than that, I just uh, have to finish with the tip and then treat it real good. I mean, when you treat it with Burt's Bees hand salve, it really brings out the grain in the wood, and it's kind of like polishing the wood. And, and I've also found over time, it just seems like it helps keep the wood from cracking so uh, I'm really happy so far I'm not sure if you can see this or not but it's really really pretty the grain and everything and one thing about hedge wood the more you handle it like when you move your hand across it when you're walking it kind of gives it a really nice uh, patina and kind of darkens over time so there you go I'm back in a minute Okay, I'm getting ready to put the tip on it. This is a, a Veritas cane tip that I bought from Lee Valley Tools. Now these are probably some of the best tips you can get. They're expensive, but they're well worth it. Um, it comes with a, a real nice set of instructions that you use. It's really simple to, uh, to install. And one of the things I like about it too is you, you, it comes with two different tips. You've got an off-road tip. It's got like a little spike on the end for traction on rough terrain and it's got a little rubber tip you know that you can use inside or just walking on the sidewalk or whatever so and this is the largest tip that they sell they sell I think three different sizes but this is the one I wanted to use for this application and I, I've done this before so I already know how to taper the tip to the right you know size and everything uh, but Lee Valley Tools also makes a tapered tenon cutter if you don't want to you know do it by hand or manually that, that will actually cut the uh, the taper that you need to fit your tip which is kind of cool anyway that's what I'll do now and I've already established uh, the center point and you know I just need to drill a, a one eighth hole about an inch deep basically what I did is I just put the tip on it where I wanted it and I used that as a, a guide to get my hole started and so I've already got a hole you want to do it as close to the center as you can. This one already had a little, a little knot hole in the end, so I just used that. And I'm probably going to use a little bit of um, Gorilla Glue just to re reinforce the tip because it's got some cracks in it. Now uh, that's just to get a little extra measure of protection there. Okay, I got my pilot hole drilled. It'll kind of seal those cracks up and also just kind of if it ever works loose give me just a little bit of extra holding power okay. so it's just basically you've got two screws that come with it 
one screw is like a little wood screw that holds the tip on and then depending on which tip you use whether it be the uh, you know the off-road tip or the rubber tip you would use this second screw this is what holds the rubber tip on if you use this one and I think that's what I'm going to put on here this time all you do is you take a you know a little drill bit or something and it screws on itself so you don't need the other screw okay just one quick editorial note I'm not sure if this will show but the screw that comes with the Lee Valley Veritas tip has got like a little square head um, thing which I don't have a daggum <laughs> square head uh, driver so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re replace this screw with a uh, star head regular wood screw uh, it's just a little longer but it, it's not a big deal so it's the same essentially the same type of screw but I don't have that type of tip but I do have this so And then just you want to be careful not to over tighten it because depending on what kind of wood it is you might strip it out so you just give it just what it needs to secure it and that's it don't overdo it all right that's a pretty nice tight fit and then like I said a minute ago this this uh, off-road tip it just screws into the t into the end here This is a really, really nice, high quality tip. I think these are made in Canada. Alright, and that'll do it. So that turned out really nice. It's so just a, pretty much a perfect fit. Hopefully this will show on the camera. It's pretty flush. Now, if you're, you know, if you're a better woodworker than I am, you probably could, you know, reset or offset this so that it, you know, looks nicer and cleaner. But I'm not really worried about all that. That's just for doing it by hand. I think that's a really nice fit. So there's my tip. Very happy with that. And they make this tip also in a stainless steel. This is the brass one. So, all right, well, I'm just about done, and just one more step, and I'll be finished. All right, well, I'm done now. I'm really pleased with the way this one turned out. You know, this essentially was just a piece of discard from a, one of the blanks I used a couple of years ago to make a stick. And I just figured what the heck I'm going to give it a try and see how it turns out. You know, one of the things I did notice um, as I started it, I was thinking the belt sander would knock down that secondary bark but it was just too hard and I don't think I had a uh, you know coarse enough belt so that was a little lesson learned there but uh, once I got all that off and started sanding it really turned out nice you know it is twisted but it lines up pretty nice from head to toe so it's going to make a pretty good walking stick you know, it has a few cracks in it but you know, what I found over the years of doing this is the cracks usually will stabilize. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it with some Burt's Bees hand salve. You know, and this essentially what this does is it kind of shines the wood and really brings out the wood grain. So that's what I'm going to do now. You know, usually I'll treat this, you know, every couple of months after the initial treatment and when I first start you know when I first treat it I'll probably put eight or ten coats on it over a couple two or three day period you know I'll just put a couple of coats on it and work it in by hand and then let it sit overnight and then come back the next day and do it all over again so all right hopefully this will focus just to kind of give you an idea of the grain and how nice it looks once you treat it with the Burt's Bees Really pleased with the way this one turned out. You can still see the the wormholes and everything. And I really like the knots. 
I mean, they're kind of vicious to get through, but they really add a lot of character to the stick. Just hopefully this will show you the kind of the, the way it twists and everything. turned out pretty nice. You can see the cracks, but these cracks aren't really deep. And I think they'll be okay. But overall I'm very pleased. So you know I've got another blank out in the woodshed. It's from the same time I cut these and it's a lot longer so I may sometime in the next month or so get to work on that one. If so, I'll, I'll shoot some more video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Thank you.